Hey everybody, welcome back. So I thought about it between videos, and I thought there's- I have got one idea. I think I pretty much tried everything in my inventory, but- The cloth has oil on it from clean. The oily rag. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work, because I mean, I honestly went between all the screens, and I can't find any items I'm missing. So... I didn't try the oily rag, and I didn't try the scroll, I don't think, but... Let's see if the- I don't know why the oil would make a difference, but... I can't find any other items, so... A metal box is... Adam eases the lock with the oily <sighs> rag. The key turns smoothly in the oiled lock. The box pops open to reveal a suit of protective clothing. Bizarre! What is it? I've seen clothes like this. They protect your skin from chemicals. Armor for a modern night. Do you suppose this is it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I found the key on... Adam feels an immediate relief. Whatever was in the water was making it really hard to think. Okay, so we found the key on a dead pirate that had been there for a while. At least, I'd say, it said a couple hundred years. And that key opened up a box with a hazmat suit? Nonetheless, the people who had the key to the box with the hazmat suit thought it'd be funny to impale it on a dead body of a pirate. Yo, Joe, where'd you put the key? Ah, I put it on the dead pirate. This just seems weird. Adam, I can't go any farther. Whatever is in this water is really affecting me. I'll wait right here as long as I can take it. Why don't you go outside and wait? Adam signals okay to Delphinius. Oh my. A group of metal drums lie rusting in this hidden spot. A familiar greenish glow seeps from the rusting patches in the metal. Now Adam realizes what the oracle meant by poison of the deep. The deadly poison which lurks in the drums has been slowly released into the water, bringing disaster to the reef. The barrels are rusting. It would be unsafe to touch them. Well, According to that blackboard... Adam attaches the float to the cable. He now has a working buoy. Adam attaches the transmitter to the float at the end of the cable. I believe it's all we needed. The arrow lets you pick an item to use on, on the main screen. Let's take a look at this. Oh gosh, that's an annoying noise. Adam turns on the transmitter and attaches his improvised satellite buoy to the barrel. The float rises toward the surface. The transmitter is emitting a constant, powerful signal. That's a good thing this ship was there, like, right when we needed it. Adam watches from a distance as the divers carefully collect the drums. Grimly, they bear them to the surface and stow them on the boat for safe disposal on land. Adam gives the metal box and suit as evidence of illegal dumping. He returns to the reef to find Delphinius and continue <laughs> the search for Cetus. So, so son, what did you do today? Well, I found a dolphin that can talk, and then I went to an apartment and f helped a bunch of fish and other sea creatures with their problems, and then I found some illegal dumping and gave it... The everybody evidence for all the illegal dumping, and then I went back on my mystical adventure to find a whale. What'd you do, Dad? Adam, you did it! The poison is gone! The first part of the prophecy is fulfilled! Oh, we're near the end of the game, too. They've taken it away, that's true. But I'm afraid it will be a long time before anything can survive here. We also have to worry about catching the people who did this. It looks to me like they've been using this spot for a while. But that's something I'll have to leave up to my dad. <coughs> Excuse me. And we still haven't found Cetus. Oh no. Alrighty. The skeletons of unfortunate creatures who wandered here cover the floor of the cave. That's actually pretty depressing, so let's just move on. Okay. 
Safe. We removed the poison. The harpoon gun is a reminder of the dreadful practice of whale hunting. This one has been Aww. triggered. I think for the most part, I know most countries it's illegal for whale hunting these days. I thought. I don't think. I'm pretty sure it's still legal in some places. The cable from the harpoon is still attached to the gun. The cable is stuck. It's stuck. The cable's really wedged in there. It's a purple dolphin. Okay, let's use this helpful trident. Adam, I don't like the looks of it here. Um. Okay. Adam! But behind you! The scary mountain? Flesh eater, run! Wouldn't the correct term be swim? Whoa, that is a giant Adam manta. Adam and flee in terror from the huge flesh-eating monster. Technically, uh, we are also both flesh-eating monsters. Uh oh, am I supposed to be doing something? With a feeling of utter helplessness, Adam prepares to feel the sharp bite of Flesh Eater's jaws. The monster is so close that his hot wake ruffles the back of Adam's neck. In their panicked terror of the danger behind them, Adam and Delphinius fail to notice the danger in front of them. They both plow head first into the drift net. The nylon mesh wraps its arms around them. The two are trapped. Delphinius, we're trapped. <laughs> That's ironic. Adam, you've got to save yourself. I'll never get out of this thing, but you still have a chance. I won't leave you, Dale. So what? We both end up manta food? Do it, Adam. Save yourself. Adam waits for the manta to finish them off. Two helpless victims trapped in the net. To his surprise, Flesh Eater only circles them. Oh no, it's not gonna let me save. Can I saw my way through? Adam can't wield that hacksaw while he's entangled. It's too big. Besides, the hacksaw is too dangerous to use so close to Adam's flesh. How about a sharp rock? Adam maneuvers the sharp shell around and begins to rub it against the nylon net. The shell saws through the nylon, loosening the net's grasp on Adam. He's free! You did it, Adam! Now get out of here, fast! Are you crazy? What kind of friend do you think I am? Adam turns back frantically to cut loose his friend. But he magically floats away. But before he can free Delphinius, Flesh Eater swoops in. Enraged to see one of his victims escape and determined not to lose the other, he seizes the net with poor Delphinius still in it. Oh no. And knocks Adam aside with one flick of his huge wing. Delphinius, no. Adam, find Cetus. Only he can save me now. We don't trust me. Adam finds himself suddenly alone. The drift net with its precious cargo and the monster are gone. What on earth, Adam thinks, can he do now? And will he ever see Delphinius again? Let's go back to where we were. Uh, as soon as I tried using the, uh... Um, tried it on the door... So all that stuff happened. I wonder if the monster was mutated by all that... Um... Goo. Adam wedges the trident under the crack of the bloated ship's door and pushes on the handle as hard as he can. The waterlogged wood suddenly gives way and the door pops free of its frame. The cable that had been jammed under the door suddenly jerks tight as though pulled by a mighty weight. Interesting. And through the open ship's door, Adam hears a sound. A sound unmistakably sad, unmistakably deep, unmistakably haunting, unmistakably a whale's call. 
Ooh, what kind of whale? The whale call is louder here. It's echoing down from somewhere above the ship. Adam holds his breath with anticipation and swims up to investigate. Following the taut cable up and up towards the surface light. <laughs> like, up and up, there. not looking where he's going. Until suddenly... Looks like a sperm whale. Whoa! It's Cetus! The mighty Cetus floats helplessly near the ocean's surface. He is terribly still. With a mixture of joy and fear, Adam approaches the mighty whale. Your Majesty! You're hurt! No wonder you've been missing. You're trapped here by that harpoon. Yes, child. And you are the one foretold. I fear you may be too late. He sounds kind of like a pirate ghost. But what happened? How did you get harpooned? It was Flesh Eater. I heard him cry out and went to help. He tricked me into the whaler's path. Can't you get free? You can't just die. Illyria needs you. The harpoon holds me fast. I cannot get it out of my mouth. I am so weak. I have not long. Cetus sinks into unconsciousness and his great eye shuts. The harpoon wound has become infected and he is near starvation from being trapped in this one spot. Cetus is getting weaker by the moment. Hmm. Well, the way the harpoons work, I believe, is we, we need to go inside of him to remove it. Pulling, we just can't pull it out. The back of the whale's mouth is closed here. Adam will have to get further away from the whale if he wants to get in Cetus' mouth. Oh, well, is it actually going to let me? There's nothing Adam can do for The back of the whale's mouth is closed here. Adam will have to get further away from the whale if he wants to get in Cetus' mouth. I don't understand why I have to get further away to get inside his mouth. Oops. Oh. Adam decides to make a dash for Cetus' moving mouth. Adam will have to time his approach to the mouth more carefully if he's to get inside. Okay. Adam oh, decides to... Alrighty. The harpoon has pushed through the whale's flesh. Its barbed head juts out several inches into the whale. That's what the saw is for! Pick that up before he swallows it. Okay. Adam uses the industrial saw to cut through the harpoon shaft. The barbed harpoon head falls to the bottom of the sea. Adam can't pull the harpoon out from inside the mouth. The cable is still attached to... Th Though Adam has removed the harpoon head, the harpoon shaft is still lodged in the wound. There's nothing Adam can do to... Adam decides... Yes, let's get closer. Let's pull it out now. Adam carefully works the shaft backwards through the wound. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, ooh, that looks painful. Though the harpoon has been removed, it has left a nasty wound. The wound is infected and is preventing Cetus from recovering. Aw, that's what healing medicine is for. Here you go, Cetus. The healing potion won't do Cetus any good if Adam puts it there. The healing potion... Oh, I have to click just right. Adam uses Demeter's precious store of medicine on the wound. Here you go, Cetus. Wow, he's taking his time. Cetus, you're awake! Are you feeling okay? Are you gonna make it? Be calm, child. I am much better. I feel the wound already healing. 
You have saved me. Now that you're better, we have to save Dolphinius. Flesh Eater took him and he's in terrible danger. Flesh Eater, it is time to end the killing. I will call him forth. You must go rescue the dolphin. Technically, sperm whales are carnivores too. I think they eat squid. Meanwhile, Delphinius is reliving the nightmare of being trapped in a drift net, unable to reach the surface for air, unable to free himself. This time, however, Flesh Eater is there to add to his terror as he circles the dolphin, waiting for his victim's struggles to cease. Is he a spider? Okay. Can I stop watching this now? <laughs> oh gosh, it's so evil looking. Just as Delphinius arrives at a grim acceptance of his fate, a challenge echoes from outside the lair. Rise, cowardly one. Leave your foul lair and prepare to meet your doom. No more shall you trouble my people, for Cetus has returned. Enraged that the Great King has escaped his prison, Flesh Eater wheels from the cave. <laughs> I like the angry eyebrow on him. Go into the lair. Save the dolphin while you can, little one, before it's too late. Actually, before we Adam can't disown me. Fine. Now that Flesh Eater is distracted by the mighty whale, Adam is free to enter the beast's lair. I was gonna go get the spearhead from the harpoon, but I guess I don't need it. Let's look at the situation. Cocooned in the drift net, Delphinius struggles frantically. I'll get you out as fast as I can. Hang in there, Delphinius. Don't give up on me. How about we cycle? Adam has no time to think about cleaning up right now. <laughs> There's always time to clean up. Let's use this trusty little thing. Shell. Wow, this shell's been really useful. Oh man, I'm glad you showed up. I'm about ready to suffocate. You're spending a lot of energy swimming around. I hate this nylon stuff. I'm cutting as fast as I can. Hold on, Dolphinius, just another second. I promise. I'm out of here to grab some air, dude. Can't stop the chat. I'll see you outside. Mike has got a tire in his lair. Okay, so let's hard- Adam can't just- The gun is jammed from its last firing. Let's see here. Let's throw the harpoon! That won't help! The harpoon gun has already caused all the damage it will ever cause and is no longer of concern to Adam. Adam can't do Adam's done all he can to strengthen Cetus. There's nothing he can do for him now. Adam can't fight the manta with his big The trident's points would be but a pinprick to the Ooh, I know. Adam arms himself with a tiny lionfish spine and with all the courage he can muster and heads towards the black monster. But before he can wield his weapon, he is spotted by the manta and flicked disdainfully away. He'll have to get more careful in his approach if he's to get close enough. The harpoon... Nope, that... So I need to wait, I think, from here. You're barking up Adam Ar... While the manta is distracted by Cetus, Adam manages to get close to one huge black wing and pierce the tough hide with the lionfish spine. There's a moment of terror in which Adam is sure the poison will not be enough to even slow down the huge beast. But it's enough to make him hesitate in his attack, if only for a moment. <laughs> How happy Cetus looks. And that moment is enough. It's really you! And you killed Flesh Eater! Unbelievable! I'm glad to see you safe. 
was it, Byron? My green friend. But the Manta is not dead, only stunned. There will be time for all that later. Right now, there's a city I'm longing to see. And a hero to be thanked. But where were you, and how did Adam find you, and why did you disappear for so long, and how... How did I get so short on points? I know it was my first time playing, but... What did I miss? In a true champion's welcome, Adam rides on the back of King Cetus in a slow procession to the city. Cetus bellows an announcement of their triumphant return. Come forth, children. Greet thy king and the boy called Adam. Adam slips off the back of the mighty whale and swims to join the happy Allurians. Yay. The oracle is a real fish. Congratulations, Adam. Oh, I'm so moved. Boo hoo. Bravo. I knew a strapping lad like you could do it. Like, unbelievably radical, Adam did. Made your way to go. You have proven yourself one with the greens, Adam. Good show, old boy. <laughs> I like how he's still animated with the thing on his head. You're a real hero now, Adam. <laughs> it is well that you did the job, Adam, since I did not have the time. You did almost as well as I would have, mon ami. You were very, very brave, Adam. Child of man, to you we owe our lives. Our thanks we now bestow. Adam, you have rescued me from certain death. You have helped put an end to Flesh Eater's reign of terror. You have saved Illuria from ruin. You have made us believe that mankind is perhaps not the enemy we feared it to be. That man can even be a friend. Thank you, Great Cetus. I have learned much from all of you, too. Well, I think it's kind of with any species, though. There's the good and the bad. Take this conch. If you ever need a friend in the sea, blow the conch and help will come. Whoa, well, it's 25 points short now. Poseidon's conch. Wow. Thank you, your majesty. Now, home with you, child. Delphinius, I believe your friend could use a ride back to the land of men. He looks a little worn out. I have to admit, I would be worn out if I was swimming and swimming and swimming for hours and doing all that stuff, and there's no way he had that much air. Yes, sir, your majesty. Grab a fin, Adam. I can't believe I was 25 points short. I must have missed some trash or something. Or do I get 25 points Adam bids farewell to Illyria and King Cetus, and grabbing on to Delphinius' dorsal fin, hangs on tight for the long ride home. Delphinius! Yeah, Adam. Will I ever see you again? No. What? Are you kidding? You and your dad die for dance? You'll see a hundred dolphins in your lifetime, Adam. One of these days, one of those dolphins will be me. I love you, Dolphinius. Aww. Aw, get out of here, you nut, yeah. I love you, too. Even though we didn't spend half the game with him. I can't believe I was 25 points short. I'll have to look up to see where I missed those points. I'll put them in the description. I'm not bad, though, for my first time playing the game. 
Missing 25 points. So that was Eco Quest 1, Search for Cetus. Uh, I actually kind of enjoyed it. It was a cute little game. Um, I beat it all in one sitting, actually, without having to think that hard. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed my little LP, and I will... Maybe another weekend when I, I'm a little bored, I'll play Equal Quest 2, which I actually know nothing about. So, except for I know Jane Jensen wasn't a part of Equal Quest 2, which is why I think it wasn't as well known. And I think it was actually harder from what I understand. Um, so it didn't catch on as well. Because if you're going to make a kid's game, you don't want to make it too hard because then the kids are going to get frustrated. And if it's aimed at kids and the plot's something like this, older kids aren't going to play because they don't want to learn, you know. So I think it might just kind of fell into that that hole or void. Um, but I actually ended up get, I did get a copy of it while I was trying to get Equal Quest 1. But I literally spent all day recording and I'm kind of tired now, so... Oh, apparently superfluous is things slowed way down. Oh, is that it? I'm still waving. Okay. Well. Are you sure you want to start all over? Shit, I kind of do. I still want... It's still bugging me. How did I get him to play King's Quest V? I know I got it to happen. Stop uh, talking! Can I push escape? Nope, nope. It's kind of weird seeing my dad. Hold. Let me speed him back up. Oof. Come on. Shimmy over there faster. After all the trouble. After all. Adam picks. No, don't pick up the soda can. After all. What if I use a soda can on the computer? You're barking up. You're bark. You're bark. After. Come. No, I know. I saw him play it. On set. On set. How did I get this to happen? Hey. After. There's no. Adam. Ugh. Come take a look. No, I don't want to come take a look. What is he doing behind the desk? The direction said the desk could be put together quickly. That was accurate. Not. <laughs> After all the trouble is... After all the trouble... <laughs> Alright, well... Uh, I don't know how I got it to happen, but anyways, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye.